Good morning, Dr. Rinaldi. How are you? Good morning, Mr. Khan. How are you today? Good. I, I was hoping to have you uh, live in the studio and, and, and sit next to you and shake your hand, but obviously we can't do that. So, you know, we're using technology to communicate. Um, at least from my perspective, I'm learning. This is good because I'm learning a lot about technology that I didn't know. Uh, and I'm hoping to, I guess, ask you a few questions and you can probably educate me. Maybe I'll go back to school and learn a little bit of technology. Anyway, I appreciate you. I know you're real busy, and I appreciate you spending a little time to talk to us. Uh, there's a lot of questions out there in the community about what, what, what's going on in the school system, and uh, I want to give you the opportunity to go through some of these things and explain to folks. Um, I guess I first should ask you how you, could, how you guys are doing. How, how are you and your family doing? Everything okay? Uh, you know, doing well, and again, I appreciate the, um, you know, the, the video conference. We want to set a good example for people to stay home. Um, it's really important right now, but, uh, you know, thank you for the, the question. Uh, I hope yours is as well, but my family's doing well, uh, staying at home, trying not to drive each other crazy, but, uh, doing well. Three teenagers back home. It's, it's nice to have them home again. Yeah, I, I understand you have three. Are they, is, are they in college or high school? I have a son in, in college, a freshman in college and two daughters, a junior in high school and a sophomore in high school. And, and what district are they in? Uh, we live in Burlington County. They go to the Rancocas Valley Regional District. I, obviously, they're doing some kind of distance learning or homeschooling as well. Um, different. I have um, younger kids in the school system, as you may know. I have two kids in uh, Randolphville School, and I, I guess the, the challenges between elementary school and high school are, are somewhat different. Um, I guess it's good that you're getting a chance to see it not only from the superintendent side, but from a parent side as well. There, there, there's a lot of things that I take from my personal experience with my own, with my own children and, and really bring into the conversation that I have when it comes to my job. Um, you know, as an educator and as a parent, I talk a lot about my own experiences with my kids and what they go through. Um, and, and again, we, we try to correlate things and make it make the best situation for everybody. Well, I'll say, you know, I, I know you're new to the district, um, and I have some background with the Board of Education. The word, the word that I, I get uh, from various sources, teachers and parents and others, is uh, giving you pretty high marks. And uh, I think you've, you've, you've made a great start in the school district. Unfortunately, uh, the world threw a big hurdle at you in your first uh, year here. But you, I think um, the general feedback I get is that people really like your hands-on approach to things. And uh, as a parent, and a member of the community, I like that as well. So I guess the first question I have in general is, um, to tell me what some of the, the challenges are and how you folks are dealing with them. And then I, I, I probably have some more specific questions. Sure, I, I think the, the uh, biggest challenge for us was the, was the transition. I mean, a month ago, a little bit more, maybe five weeks ago, um, I couldn't have imagined that there would be a time when we would be out like this. Uh, but it quickly became a reality. And the, one of our, our biggest challenges to begin with was the transition, right? We had a plan, we had a plan in place and it was a good plan. Um, but as the plan goes, goes forward, the, the transition is a little difficult, especially for parents. We do understand uh, the, the, uh, the hardship it is on families. So a lot of parents are home working from home and uh, have to be almost the educator as well. Right. Um, I think another one of our huge challenges is is equity, right? We want to make sure that whatever we deliver, uh, the uh, the type of delivery of instruction that we have, that equity is taken into consideration. Uh, you know, basically the the connectivity of devices, the number of devices. If a, a family has Wi-Fi, do they have four kids in the house that need to get on the computers at the same time? Um, you know, staff uh, it, it, they they want their they want to be with their kids, right? They want to see their faces. So, um, you know, those are some of the initial uh, big challenges, um, and there's a lot, lot of specifics, but, um, you know, making sure our, our, um, our families in need receive their meals that they normally would, would receive uh, if they were in school. Uh, so there's a lot of details. It, it's amazing how much, um, how the little details all pile up when, when, you're, when you're not in school or you don't have people in their offices to do their work. Yeah, well, I, you know, that's just... Different question on the side is the meal the meal program. I know when these things first happened, there was a lot of concern about that, and I believe you're working. I believe you're working with the town to coordinate uh, the meals program. How's that going? Absolutely. I think that the uh, no, number one, first of all, I want to uh, thank the partnership with the town. 
Um, you know, you mentioned before that I'm new to the district. Um, actually, I'm here about six years. This is my sixth year here, uh, but my first year as superintendent. I spent five years as assistant superintendent um, and then took over the superintendency in, in July. And since then, um, you know, I've had a great relationship with, with, the, with the mayor, with the town. Uh, the communication's been terrific. Uh, the police department with, uh, with Chief Mosier. Uh, who I who who actually was on the board when I was hired, uh, so I know him pretty well. Um, but I want to thank thank uh, uh, you know everybody for their cooperation. You know, I, I make a phone call and vice versa, and the answer is no problem. We'll help you. So that's that's terrific. Um, so the, the meal plans, yeah, I we and and the meal plan number one, and then the distribution of materials number two. The town was instrumental in in helping us. Um, you know, basically our our meal plan is is to deliver the the uh, the, the lunches, the breakfast and lunches to the students. Uh, in need. Uh, at, at first, we were driving it to their bus stops, if everybody knows, if everybody was part of that. Uh, we adjusted some bus stops and we were driving it to that. And then, as this situation of the coronavirus got worse, we, we wanted to try to lessen um, the amount of people in one place at one time. So we um, changed our, our program to where now we set up a location at each of our schools. Uh, including the two children's corner locations across uh, one on each side of town and the administration building to where we have lunches that people could come pick up between uh, 9.30 and 1130 every morning from Monday through Friday. So, you know, I, my kids are, are involved in, you know, uh, the homeschooling really. And I, I, I confess my, my wife, while she's a lawyer and works, is really the one that's doing the homeschooling. Um, I, my participation is, is, has been mostly to get in the way um, but I've had a chance to see some of that and I, and I understand, uh, how some of it's working and, and I've had some feedback from some of the teachers and I, I understand there's going to be some changes made going forward. T tell us about that. So, uh, at the onset of this, our, our plan was, well, let me, let me back up a little bit. We have, um, a computer platform called Schoology and, and this Schoology platform we have from third graders all the way up to 12th graders. And basically it's just a learning management system. Whereas um, we can push and pull information, we could show videos, we could do sort of instruction through Schoology. Um, kindergarten through second grade um, don't have a Schoology account, right? Um, from the fourth grade up, we were able to secure devices for students uh, up to 10th grade. Um, but the, the K3s are a little bit different. So at the onset, not knowing how long this was gonna be, um, we communicated work through email and paper packets and, and things like that. Um, you know, not the best. And we, we know that it was going to be a lot of, um, you know, work for parents as well. So we are making an adjustment as we get into the fourth quarter. The end of the third quarter is this Friday. We're making adjustments um, as we go into there to uh, make available uh, video streaming for classrooms, for class uh, access for kids at all levels. Uh, between from K to three, we'll use Zoom as we're using right now. And from four to 12, we'll use our Schoology video platform. Um, now, different teachers are gonna have different, I guess, uh, experiences with technology, just as you and I, right? We, we struggle with this stuff a little bit as, as we're learning, um, but we are gonna make it available. At the onset of this, um, there were some uh, student privacy issues that I wanted to make sure we were compliant with. Uh, that's why we didn't jump right into the video components as we uh, as we enter three weeks ago, but now we have those all straightened out. And um, as of the start of the fourth quarter, Monday, maybe even um, you know Thursday, Friday, I'm going to uh, notify the teachers uh, today, which is Tuesday, uh, that we're going to make that available for them. Yeah, I mean that the feedback that I'm getting from parents and teachers, not just in my own house, that the, the, the kids are looking for, and the teachers are are anxious to have more of an interactive learning process. It sounds like that's what we're going to be be moving into. Am I right? Yeah, no question about it. Uh, we want we want the teachers to see the kids' faces and vice versa. We want them to be more engaged. And the the, the nice thing about both of these platforms is if a student, uh, if a teacher has a, a an interactive lesson or an online lesson um, at at nine thirty, and there are uh, situations where a, a a student can't get a device at home or can't get on or, or whatever it may be, we can embed these links so a student could actually access them a little bit later on in the day and go through the lesson and take care of the material and things like that and at least see a teacher and some classmates. 
That, that, that's been one of my concerns from the beginning. I mean, my, you know, we, we have technology in the house. My, my wife has the ability to, to spend the time and, and thoroughly teach the kids. But, I, you know, Piscataway has always been a community where we took care of those less fortunate and everybody was really treated equally and fairly. And I, I've, I've been concerned about the kids that don't have that ability. So what are you all doing for that? Sure. Uh, equity is a huge issue for us. We, we talk about equity. We've been talking about it for six years now since I've gotten here. So if we didn't, if we didn't um, keep that at the forefront of, of what we're doing now, all the last six years would be, would be, you know, a waste of what we discussed. Right. So it is at our, our, uh, the forefront of what we think um, the, the devices that we can, we could deploy to students in need, um, we, we can get them to them. So basically we've told parents to, you know, contact us as, as we, as we go into this, uh, on more online platform, we'll get it out again to parents. If you need a device or you don't have one at home, um, you know, contact us and we'll do our best to get you one. Uh, also, we sent out information about um, internet companies offering free internet to people during this time. Uh, Altice, Optimum, Comcast, things like that. Um, so they could call up those companies, get hooked up with free internet, and then we would provide them with a device if they, ha if they need that. So another one of the concerns that I had, um, and I'm sure you do, is the psychological effect of... Um, you know, this shutdown and this crisis on school, on school kids. Um, I know the school psychologists have been involved uh, in a program now. Um, how, you, how, you, how are you folks going to address that? And, and what concerns do you have about the psychological impact of, uh, of where we are right now? Sure. Even, even well before uh, and any of the situation approached us, um, the, the uh, emphasis on student wellness and you know with the entire with the entire student and staff right their physical emotional mental wellness was is, is a huge part of what we do um and and this just exacerbates everything tremendously right um so what we've talked to our principals about and our teachers is we want to try to celebrate and connect with the kids as much as possible that's a huge part of why we want to go into this this virtual uh, you know, platform as well. Um, we have our counselors available for kids and parents to be able to talk to over the phone. Um, we really, again, want to try to have that connection. Um, we get messages out to parents uh, that if you need our help in any way, we'll be here. Uh, we still have the Haven at the high school, those resources that are provided by Rutgers, even though they're virtual, they're resources. Um, and we could set up situations where a parent and a child could interact with a counselor or behaviorist via Zoom or any kind of platform that we're doing right now. So uh, I, I know your time is busy, but I have a couple of, of uh, quick questions. That you, you may not know the answer to because, uh, you know, the things keep rapidly changing. So, you know, before I had the opportunity to talk to you today, I talked to a few, you know, students and parents throughout the school district. And as, as one would be expected, there's rumors and stories of all, of all sorts. Has um, have you given any thought to you know some of the spring events that the high school looks forward to the graduation, proms those things? Is it any thought to how those things uh, may come to place? Delayed, canceled? Do you do you know the answer to that at all? Yeah, so we obviously gave a lot of thought to it. We we have conversations all day about what's next. We try to stay you know four or five weeks ahead of everything. Um, and with the executive order of, of the governor and, and uh, other information that we're coming, that's coming out where this is going to bleed into, into May, possibly, things like that, uh, we're, we're trying to hold on to all of those activities, especially for kids who are celebrating, you know, the prom, graduation, uh, you know, things of that nature. Um, so as I sit here now, I don't know what we're going to do, but uh, as, as the weeks go on, uh, we'll have a little more clarity. Uh, you know, graduation, we usually graduate at the Rutgers Athletic Center, right? Uh, and that would be, I think, that date is set for June 18th this year. So, um, you know, we're hopeful that we can get back. But hopeful is a strong word there. We don't really know yet. Uh, if the governor comes and says we're, we're, we're closed for the rest of the year, then we have to put different plans into place. Uh, maybe, 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 okay, working with Rutgers uh, to postpone that date a little bit further down the road, right, uh, to have that celebration. Um, and the proms... You know, we have six, 600 people, 700 people at our prom. So to find a venue um, that would hold us at, at a different date might be difficult. So we're lucky as our, as our uh, prom is a little bit later. It's scheduled, I think, for June 4th. 
So it's a little bit later. We have a better opportunity to be back in school than some other schools. I know one of my daughter's uh, prom was supposed to be last Friday. So she missed that, unfortunately. No, that's too bad. Yeah. So uh, are, there any, are there any plans that you know about extending the school year or changing the school calendar? That's another question people ask. Uh, sure, yeah, I do know the answer to that. There is no plans to extend the school year. Uh, I already put out in some communication that spring break is going to remain the same. Um, and these days were uh, granted by the uh, State Department of Education to count as 180 days of education. And so we will go through, as long as we're delivering instruction and feeding the kids who need to be fed, we will go through those as the 180 days. Now, we are having some discussions about summer. Usually, we have jump ahead summer for some students and some programs um, that might need it. Uh, and we are having some discussions about opening that up to kids who might have missed some vital stuff during this time. And then you have the summer camp program that's extremely popular. Uh, any plans with regard to that yet? Yeah, no, I mean, our, our hope is that we can have it as normal. Um, but we are actually uh, discussing what happens if we have to push it back a week or two weeks or things like that. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to trying to get back to some normalcy for everybody. And, and again, just the psychological and mental health of everybody, just getting back to some normalcy about being around other people. But for now, um, we're holding on and hoping because that doesn't start until I think January, I mean, June, I think 23rd or 24th. So uh, I thank you for being on. Um, I, 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 could, I could tell you that if, you, if there's issues or questions and you need something from the town, call the, call the mayor. You can call me. Uh, you know, we want to be there to be partners with the school system. Uh, that's what's in the best interest of the community. I think you, I think you guys are doing a great job uh, under really difficult uh, circumstances. And I, I guess I want to close by asking you if there's anything else that you want to say. Is there any message you want to say to the parents and kids out there while, yeah. while we have the opportunity? Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I think that the message is that we're all in this together. And um, when we get... Um, when we get emails or phone calls about something that, uh, you know, somebody has an idea or something that maybe their child isn't, isn't getting, we take that very seriously. Uh, every email that we get or every phone call that we get, we, we, we call those people back uh, and we try to explain, you know, our rationale for things and why we're doing it and how we're doing it. And hopefully the changes that we come into next week will allay a lot of the, um, a lot of the concerns that some parents have, specifically the hardships on them, right? We understand that they're working from home as well. They can't spend four hours a day educating their kids. It's, that's something that we need to do. Uh, but I guess the, the final message is we're all in this together. We want to take care of everybody as best we can. So please let us know if there's more we can do. Thank you very much. Good luck the rest of the school year. Uh, and I, I'm looking forward to, to shaking <laughs> hands and talking to you in person as soon as we're able to do that. You as well, Mr. Khan. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Have a good day. You too.